What's up everyone? We're here in Michael Hagedorn's garden uh, with his new apprentice, Carmen. Actually, I don't know if I should say new or not. How long have you been here? I've been here for almost a year. So not super new. You've, not super uh, new. You've, you know the ropes on, on this garden. Yeah. Yep. And before I apprenticed, I uh, came out for the seasonal courses. So I had a little bit of background even before moving all the way out here. So tell me a little bit about your background and what, how you ended up here, basically. Uh, so I started working for the University of Michigan back in 2009 as a horticulturist. My first job there was uh, doing a renovation on their 100-year-old peony garden. And so I was doing that for about a year and a half, and then the woman who was uh, managing the bonsai collection was moving on to a different team uh, within the organization. So. Um, the full-time permanent horticulture position came up, which included managing the bonsai collection. So in 2011, I started managing the bonsai collection with the, the University of Michigan. And 2018, I started doing Michael Hagedorn's seasonal classes. Um, when that finished, I decided I wasn't done and wanted to apprentice. And it, it fit my career path in that uh, we're receiving a large donation of trees from a private collector. So having the experience of training here with Michael will give me the skills that I need to manage that collection um, appropriately. So this is a pretty famous uh, collected vine maple composition that Michael put together, I think probably before you were here, right? Yeah, yeah, before I was here. Um, it's my favorite tree in the yard. Uh, I think mostly because it reminds me of actually being out in the woods. Um, it might be a little bit ironic because I don't think this tree has had much wire or much of anything other than some pruning. But I really like the, the flow of it. It's very natural. It's very curvy, open, and it just, it really kind of speaks to me, this unique style that, that Michael has. So in your podcast on Bonsai Wire with Sam, you guys were talking about uh, the use of the terms feminine and masculine in, bon yeah. in Bonsai. It's so and, tricky. And I was like, but I wanted to just say like elegant versus powerful yeah. instead of like feminine versus masculine. Right. I guess that like kind of segues into like the whole purple pot thing. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't really until I started thinking about purple pot society and kind of my desire to make like hyper feminine trees or what would be considered hyper feminine within the bonsai community. And then at, at that point, between my conversations with Sam on how we use gendered terms in bonsai too, it's, I'm still unlearning really the feminine and masculine terms within bonsai and trying to move to elegant and curvy and all of these different things. But gender in bonsai is really, really fascinating to me. Or the mountain ash. Yeah, the mountain ash is really fabulous. I believe this one's collected. I don't really know the history of this tree, but I remember seeing it in the garden and being a little bit taken aback because it's so different than how you see most bonsai. But again, that's one of the things I appreciate about Michael's style is he doesn't always try to force trees into looking like you would expect a bonsai to look. Uh, some of them are just allowed to exist as they are. Um, but this one really hit me during a seasonal class. We were doing display and we were able to create the most subtle display for this mountain ash. And like that's kind of when bonsai display really just kind of clicked for me. And this tree's kind of just been one of my favorites ever since. I really like uh, this blueberry, it's, I've never, I hadn't seen one until I had come to Michael's yard. I think it's a really interesting choice as bonsai. It could be used almost as a kusumono. The flowers are just so pretty and delicate in the spring and it actually has blueberries on it throughout the summer um, that we'll occasionally snack on as we're watering if the birds don't get to them first. It's kind of a race, <laughs> whoever gets to the blueberries first wins. First come, first serve. Yep, yep, I think it's gonna have a lot of berries this year. One of the things I admire Michael for the most is his attention to detail in terms of accent plantings, Kusumono. Is that one of the reasons why you were intrigued with working with him? I think so. The Kusumono is just 
gorgeous. Um, again, it's that kind of natural, airy feel. It's not super, you know, traditional, formal bonsai that you, you know, that you expect to see all of the time. It's always a little unexpected. This is always a favorite, the maiden hair fern. It's, it looks great this time of year. I'm um, just starting to unfurl. This is Vivian, our yard cat. It's not growing super well right now, but I've got little Carex in there for whiskers and a little succulent nose, and ideally it will be furry moss. And I don't know, I like it. It really bugs Michael, which makes me smile. <laughs> I have actually a squirrel with some mice on it, so I could like put the, the cat and the mice and just let them. Bonsai doesn't have to be so serious all the time. I think Purple Pot Society has got to be the perfect name for uh, a, a women's bonsai organization mm -hmm. because so like I have color weakness like I'm not colorblind oh, okay. but yeah. I have color weakness so mm -hmm. like I can see blue and I can see yellow and I can see green and whatnot but when you get into the difference between blue and purple or the difference between blue and like a blue green. Oh, like a teal. Yeah. yeah, that like I just don't see it mm -hmm. and you know that like 15% of the adult male population uh, is in that same category. I didn't realize So that. women naturally have a better appreciation on average of purple than men. Interesting. This is new to me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I mean, I can't find them for you. Can you show me some of the purple pots yes. that you like? And everybody else can appreciate them along with Most you. Most of mine are inside. I'll have to bring them out. But uh, this one actually has a tree in it. Um, oh, see, I can actually see that. This one I purchased sometime last year. So imported azalea? Yes, we were on an azalea buying trip and I handpicked this one for myself. So it's uh, fairly sentimental for me. And this one's potted in this pot mostly because when I heard about the Pacific Bonsai Expo, Jonas had texted me and said, you should put a purple pot in there. And I was like, I don't have anything in a purple pot. So I put this one in a pot, but it, it needs a little further development, but I may send it your guys way just to be like, hey. <laughs> I don't think it's show ready yet, but the pot works surprisingly well for it. Uh, so wait, what, what color are the flowers? Oh, these are bright pink. So it'll, it'll be nice. It'll be very loud altogether. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Eye nice. catching. Very quite. I, I think eye catching is a good thing. I mean, like when you like, okay, so here we are right next to like a giant old cryptomeria in an antique pot, I think. Yes. And, uh, Correct. and this thing. It's eye-catching, right? Oh, yeah. But then you're like, oh, wait, what's that purple thing? <laughs> <laughs> I had been at uh, the national show in 20... I can't remember if it was 2016 or 2018, but I was at one of them, and somebody... I was, mentioned, I was talking about a pod that had a little bit of a purple hue to it, and I was like, yeah, I like that. There should be more purple pots in the show. And somebody I was with said, oh, no, you don't do purple pots in bonsai. And I was like... Oh, really? Uh, so ever since then, it's been like my goal to get a, a tree into a purple pot into the National Bonsai Show, um, which will take me some years, I imagine. But uh, you're like, just watch me. Just watch me. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell me no, because I'll, I'll do the thing. I started noticing there, there really weren't that many purple pots in bonsai. But when I went to Japan, I mean, I found these are just a few of the ones I bought. Um, <laughs> But there were a number of purple pots, and I think too, I, we were at Gafu Ten, which is the, the Shohin show. So um, you can get away with more colorful things in Shohin. And um, I mean, they would make great Kusumono pots as well, but I'm hoping to get some nice little, you know, tiny um, Chojubai or little maybe apple trees or something, you know, real, real chunky root base, and nice little flowers something like that and some of these and eventually i'd like to get some some bigger purple pots for you know larger larger trees yeah collecting purple pots from artists everywhere would be very fun. yeah let me know shoot me a text if you see something I, actually i won't keep my eyes open i'll have to ask my wife oh right <laughs> <laughs> just kind of explain to people what the Purple Pot Society is. And I know it's kind of in the, maybe in the early stages. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe like what you're looking to do, what kind of help you might want. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just kind of how you envision it working out. Yeah, so um, it all kind of started, uh, well, you've heard my Purple Pot story from um, Nationals and then my first podcast with, with Michael and Jonas. 
uh, Jonas threw out the name Purple Pot Society, and I thought, yeah, that, that'd be a great name for a woman's uh, bonsai club. And then uh, Samantha Holm, out of the Rocky Mountain Bonsai Society, uh, had sent me an email. And she mentioned in her email, like, oh, I would love to start the Purple Pot Society if you're interested. And so we've kind of gotten together since and um, finally launched Purple Pot Society. So it's a, a nonprofit club, um, like most bonsai clubs, that the, the goal is to encourage women, educate women, and bring more inclusivity into bonsai. Uh, we'd like to get more women's trees into public gardens, uh, public collections of bonsai. We're hoping that we will be able to start chapters uh, in various states. So if people want to get involved in what you're doing, with mm -hmm. specifically with the Purple Pot Society, how mm -hmm. would they do that? For now, we have our Facebook page you can get involved in. Our website, purplepotsociety.org, has all of our information on it. And if you want to start your own chapter of Purple Pot Society, just start a club, reach out to us, and we'll, uh, we're working through how to go through actual affiliation with all of these little branches of Purple Pot Society. Yeah, I found it really interesting. The interest of women in bonsai, every, every woman I've talked to about bonsai um, has, you know, who's, who's mildly interested, wants to get involved, but there seems to be this hurdle, I think, particularly entering a space where you're not you may be the only person, you may be the only woman, or you might not be able to have, you might not have a, another woman who can like be your buddy in the space. It can be kind of intimidating and there's definitely a club culture that sometimes is, is hard to break past. But that being said, there's also a lot of clubs that are, that are super inclusive and some that are run mostly by women. And, but it still seems to, to be that the majority of, of bonsai hobbyists, amateurs, artists, enthusiasts are men trying yeah. to make that kind of I don't want to call it a safe space, but a place where women can learn and be women without being a woman, uh, making it harder to do bonsai. Yeah, the, the student population that we've seen has mostly been men. I'd love to change it. On the Purple Pot Society website, purplepotsociety.org, uh, there, Sam's, the article she wrote for the American Bonsai Society magazine last summer is posted there if you want more of the information on statistics and I believe the links to her other articles for Rocky Mountain Bonsai Society are on there as well. She has a three-part series on that blog about uh, women in bonsai, gender disparity in bonsai. It's a fascinating read. It's the, the statistics are shocking, kind of shocking. <laughs> <laughs> all right well I appreciate the tour of the garden and thank you so much for telling us all about your pots and mm -hmm. about the Purple Pot Society and uh, hopefully you can get some, get some more membership. When can we expect the next, uh, the promised segment two of the uh, Bonsai Wire podcast? Well, it'll be a little while. <laughs> give me a couple weeks, give me a month. It's spring, it's a busy season. <laughs> You've got a lot of trees to move around, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.